Hi folks, so today's video is going to be significantly different to our usual roster. Today we're going to be playing a game. So what I have done is I went on to distrowatch.com and uh, for those of you that don't know, distrowatch.com is a pretty good website when it comes to various Linux distributions and BSD distribution updates uh, when it comes to news, packages, you know, or new distribution releases, all that kind of stuff. It's a great website, it's quite well known, so I expect most of you are already familiar with it. But what I have done is I have selected 10 Linux distributions that are amongst the DistroWatch rankings. And I'm gonna present those logos to you in order of popularity. I'm gonna be starting with the most popular according to the DistroWatch rankings and then moving to the least popular. And you guys then guess which logo matches up with which Linux distribution. So the idea is that they start off somewhat easy and get progressively more difficult as the quiz goes on. Okay, so without further ado, let's uh, let's crack on. So this is the first logo. So we've got a nice blue there with what appears to be the letter Z running through it. That is, of course, a hexagon there uh, that is the, uh, the overall shape. Okay, so let's crack on with the next logo. And if you guys need a little bit more time, feel free to pause the video. Uh, okay, so this is another one. This is a few steps down in popularity, not that many overall. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the logo. Now, uh, just a little bit of a uh, disclaimer there is that if the logo includes text, I have cropped the text out. So uh, there might be some text that accompanies some of these logos, this one included. Uh, however, um, Obviously, to not make it a giveaway, uh, I have uh, decided not to include the text. Also, logos that are eff effectively all text, um, I have decided to omit from this particular quiz. Okay, next logo. Okay, so this one is uh, quite a well-known distribution. I'm surprised, actually, it is the third most popular out of the lot of this. But, of course, it is important to bear in mind that the DistroWatch rankings are they're not to be taken too seriously. Obviously, people who are interested in Linux distributions are going to perhaps drift towards uh, different distributions at a higher rate than, uh, than standard users. So there we go. We've got a sort of a rounded triangle uh, with a, uh, a sigil of some variety in the middle. So. Uh, next one down, on to number four. This one, I would say, might be the uh, the most well-known of the logos, but I could very well be wrong on that one. So it'll be interesting to see um, what you guys say in terms of difficulty down in the uh, the comments section below, of course. Uh, it's a good, uh, a good logo there, so um, we'll crack on with the next one. Okay, so this one, we're getting into the sort of the lesser-known uh, logos and lesser known distributions here. Uh, so that looks to me like an origami uh, blue bird. So that's, that's uh, pretty awesome. Okay, so on to the next one. Okay, so this one. Uh, this one actually, and a few others in this uh, quiz, I'm surprised sort of how low down they are in the DistroWatch rankings when it comes to popularity. Although I guess when it comes to DistroWatch uh, rankings, a lot of them uh, move and rotate quite a lot because uh, sometimes like when a new distribution gets released, it's going to get a, you know, obviously a, a boost in uh, attention, boost in, in general popularity and, and buzz around it. So I don't know if the DistroWatch rankings perhaps are more favourable to distributions that release regularly and maybe less favourable to long-term releases or, or even rolling releases as well, because rolling releases don't often... Uh, bring out CD images or with, with such uh, a uh, you know a grandiose unveiling as some of the other distributions. Okay, so next logo. Uh, so we are significantly down the uh, the list in terms of popularity now at this stage. Uh, next one down, we have what looks like a play button in uh, in a sort of stylized circle there. Two shades of green. That's pretty good. Um, I've never been too fond of working with green. I love it as a colour, but it is very difficult to work with because um, apparently the human eye can see more shades of green than any other colour, which means that there is uh, a greater potential for clashing and, uh, and that kind of stuff, at least in my personal, humble experience, that is. Okay, so on to the next logo. 
Uh, so yeah, we have something that uh, that resembles a Tux logo, interestingly enough. So it'd be interesting to see if some of you guys uh, pick this one up. This one, yeah, now we are quite far down the popularity uh, chart on on Distro Watch. So uh, and uh, so it'd be interesting to see how many of you guys uh, guys pick up this one. And of course, the next one. Now. In all honesty, I'm quite surprised this one is as far down the chart as it is. Um, in fact, I do believe that this is a distribution that I've tried out before. Um, anyway, that aside, take a good look. So, uh, these aren't particularly easy. Uh, I hope I've gotten a balance um, so that most people would get some right, but not all of them. Uh, let me know down in the comments section below, you know, which ones you found difficult, how many you got right, and whether or not you felt that the quiz was a little bit too difficult. I'm probably not going to be making these too regularly. This is just a little bit of a... Um, you know, just a bit of fun. Uh, but I wanted to make this video for quite some time, so... Uh, you know, let me know how it uh, goes down with you guys. Okay, so uh, make a note of, uh, of all of your choices, uh, mental or written down. Feel free to uh, jot them down in the comments section. So uh, let's uh, let's crack on with our first logo. This is Zorin OS. Uh, Zorin OS is an Ubuntu-based distribution designed specifically for newcomers to Linux. It has a Windows-like graphical user interface and many programs similar to those found in Windows. Zorin OS also comes with an application that lets users run many Windows programs. The distribution's ultimate goal is to provide a Linux alternative to Windows and let Windows users enjoy all the features of Linux without complication. Zorin OS. So, uh, yeah, and this is one I believe I have I've also tried as well. Uh, this is number 10 as of time of recording now. This is uh, 10 in terms of uh, its placing in, in popularity on distrowatch.com. The next logo, Linux Lite. So, Linux Lite is a beginner-friendly Linux distribution based on Ubuntu's long-term support release and featuring the XFCE desktop. Linux Lite primarily targets Windows users. It aims to provide a complete set of applications to assist users and their everyday computing needs, including a full office suite, media player, and other essential daily software. So yeah, this is uh, one of the distributions that you guys have been chatting with me about over on Mastodon because I'm trying to fix up an old laptop and this is one of the contenders for a, an operating system that I'm going to be running on it. So uh, it's, um, I don't know if I would, uh, if, the, if the logo is, is massively recognizable for a distribution of its popularity. Uh, it's, it's obviously a very well-known distribution, but, um, and, and, uh, and there is, of course, a clue with the logo, the sigil in the logo, of course, being a feather. But um, i got to be honest, I'm not in, I don't know if I would have got this one. Maybe, maybe not. Hmm. So the next one, of course, is Antergos. Antergos is a modern, elegant, and powerful operating system based on Arch Linux. It started life under the name of Synarch, combining the Cinnamon desktop with the Arch Linux distribution, but the project has moved on from its original goals and now offers a choice of several desktops, including GNOME 3, Cinnamon, Razor QT, and XFCE. And Turgos also provides its own graphical installation program. Uh, and its popularity is 17, but it does fluctuate quite a bit. This is one that I've tried, in fact, have used as my daily driver before. Great distribution. Um, yeah, pretty good all round. So, uh, the next logo was uh, for Peppermint OS. Uh, this is one that I have reviewed on this channel before. I think I might have used it as a daily driver on the laptop. Um, I can't remember now, I've tried so many distributions on it. Peppermint OS is a Lubuntu-based Linux distribution that aims to be lightning fast and easy on system resources. By employing its site-specific browser, Peppermint integrates seamlessly with cloud and web-based applications. The distribution's other features include automatic updates, easy step-by-step -step installation, sleek and user-friendly interface, and increased mobility by integrating directly with cloud-based applications. The distribution employs a hybrid LXDE slash XFCE desktop environment, mixing LXDE's LX session with XFCE's panel and application menu. Yeah, I quite liked Peppermint OS when I 
uh, when I tried it out, um, and I believe that there's at least one review on this channel if you look in the uh, the distro review playlist. It's basically like the handsome Frankenstein of Linux distributions. What I mean by that is that it's pieced together by because uh, there are there is some Mint software in there as well, I believe, um, some stuff that was developed by the, the Linux Mint team. So it is a bit of a Frankenstein's monster, but it works incredibly well. I I, I would never attach the word monster to it, really. Uh, it's a wonderful distribution, and uh, it's it's a good example of reminding us that a Linux that a Linux distribution. It's just a collection of software at the end of the day. And Peppermint OS have just taken, you know, what they feel is the best pieces of software from other distributions and put it together to make something that they think uh, is uh, rather suitable. And I've got to say, it is. It's very nice, wonderful distribution. Okay, so the next logo, Ferran. Now, for a, uh, now this is the, uh, this is popularity 60. This is the 60th most popular distribution as it currently stands on the Distro Watch rankings. So it's, I, th I would say that's more popular than I thought it was. I think that there, I would say that there are quite possibly better known distributions further on uh, down the list there. Uh, Ferran OS is a desktop Linux distribution based on Linux Mint's main edition. It ships with the Cinnamon desktop environment and includes the Wine compatibility layer for running Windows applications. The distribution also ships with the WPS Pro... pro with the WPS Productivity software, which is mostly compatible with Microsoft Office and the Vivaldi web browser. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, this is place 60, which is uh, yeah, like I say, I think that's a higher ranking than I would usually have given it. And of course, one of the few distributions based off of Linux Mint. We're starting to see a few of these, but. That is quite a hand-me-down chain from Debian, isn't it? You got Debian, and then from Debian you get Ubuntu, and then from Ubuntu you get Linux Mint, and then from Linux Mint you get Ferran. So it's quite far. There's quite a chain for you to get to that distribution uh, from top to bottom, which is uh, quite interesting. But um, I can't say I've ever tried this. I can't even say that I've spun it up in a virtual machine. This is uh, this is a bit of um, I don't know, like. Uh, yeah, it is what it is, F uh, Ferran OS. So the next logo, Nix OS. Now, I would expect a few of you guys to have picked this one up. I probably wouldn't have. Um, uh, I've chatted with Nix OS with a few of you guys on social media before, but it's never anything that I've been, um, that I've tried out myself or, or, or I'm particularly familiar with. Nix OS is an independently developed GNU Linux distribution that aims to improve the state of the art in system configuration management. In Nix OS, the entire operating system, including the kernel, applications, system packages, and configuration files are built by the Nix package manager. Nix stores all packages in isolation from each other. As a result, there are no slash bin, slash sbin, slash lib, or slash user directories, and all packages are kept in the slash nix slash store instead. Other innovative features of NixOS include reliable upgrades, rollbacks, reproducible system configurations, source-based model with binaries, and multi-user package management. Although NixOS started as a research project, it is now a functional and usable operating system that includes hardware detection, KDE as the default desktop environment, and SystemMD for managing system services. Hmm, this is an interesting one. A few of you guys have recommended it to me before, just because it um, is such a uh, uh, unique in its approach. Now, you know, I, I've, I've often said that Linux di uh, distributions in general have much more in common than they have what separates the, the much many more things in common than than, than difference. Many more commonalities than differences. That's probably the best way of saying it. Um, but Nix OS goes out on its own and it actually does try and, and uh, mix up the methodology a little bit and uh, you've got to respect a distribution for that and you always got to respect a distribution that doesn't base itself on another distribution because I um, would imagine and I ain't much of a developer I can tell you that there's a lot of work in doing a ground up a lot you know a huge amount of work in doing a, a ground up uh, distribution not that there isn't a huge amount of work in of course doing other distributions as well but uh, you know yeah fair play for uh, for, uh, for trying something new there Next one, 
is a little bit of a curveball, but I suspect some of you guys might have worked this one out. G Parted Live. Now, for those of you that don't know, well, I'll read out the description, of course. G Parted Live is a business card sized live US live CD distribution with a single purpose to provide tools for partitioning hard disks in an intuitive graphical environment. The distribution uses X.org, the lightweight Fluxbox manager, and the latest 4.x Linux kernel. Gparted Live runs on most x86 machines with a Pentium 2 or better. Uh, yeah, this is just a purely practical live CD distribution. I tend to keep a copy just lying around in case I do need to partition a hard disk drive. Generally speaking nowadays, not so much of an issue and the partition managers in a lot of distribution installers is actually not too bad and some distro installers actually include Gparted in uh, as you know, in their partitioning part of their, their uh, installer. And of course, I do believe that Linux Mint, along with probably a, a, a number of other distributions, include Gparted as part of their live CD. So it's, uh, it gets around, it gets around. So, um, you know, if you've got a live, if, if you've got a live Linux Mint CD, then you may not necessarily be inclined to pick up a Gparted live CD because of uh, the fact that you can do the same things with it effectively. I mean, it is just a Debian-based distribution with Gparted on top of it, but, you know, sometimes you just uh, you just need to partition the hard drive, and it works really well for that. Um, I don't know what it means by business card-sized live CD. I have a feeling that this refers to, like, the old CDs that, that were not, like, CD-sized. They were, like, half the size of CDs. Um, that you used to often get promotional stuff on. Uh, that's just a guess, but uh, I think that might be uh, where it uh, where it comes from. And this is the 121st most popular uh, distribution, which I don't know really know how to make it, what to make of that. I have no idea how popular Gparted would be because it's a very you know it's a utility rather than a general desktop environment. Great piece of kit though. OSGO Live. Now, I had not even heard of this, and this is the reason why I asked DistroWatch to randomly select distributions for me, so that I wouldn't be predisposed to um, stuff that I'm familiar with. OSGO Live is a bootable DVD USB thumb drive on or virtual machine based on Lubuntu that actually allows the user to try a wide variety of open source geospatial software without installing anything. It is composed entirely of free software, allowing it to be freely distributed, duplicated, and passed around. OS Geo Live provides pre-configured applications for a range of geospatial use cases, including storage, publishing, viewing, analysis, and manipulation of data. It also contains sample data sets and documentation. Mm, that's an interesting one. One that I gotta say, I might be tempted to just spin up in a in a VM, really, because uh, uh, this is one of those distributions that has a, you know, has a sort of distinct use case, and uh, I'm kind of uh, fascinated and interested by these distributions. They're, uh, they're quite interesting. So, on to the next one. Slytaz. I think I'm saying that right. Slytaz GNU slash Linux. Uh, now, this is, of course, one of the logos where uh, it has Slytaz on the underside of it, uh, on, you know, on the uh, subtitling it. Uh, so, uh, so obviously I cropped that one out, but um, yeah, this is it. Uh, and this is 134 on the DistroWatch rankings. Slytaz GNU slash Linux is a mini distribution and live CD designed to run speedily on hardware with 256 megabytes of RAM. Slytaz uses BusyBox, a recent Linux kernel and GNU software. It boots with SysLinux and provides more than 200 lin Linux commands. The light P the web server, SQLite database, rescue tools, IRC client, SSH client, and server powered by Drop Bear, X Windows System, JWM, just Joe's Windows Manager, GFTP, Gini, IDE, Mozilla Firefox, Alsa Player, Gparted, a sound file editor, and more. The slide tax, <coughs> the slide has ISO image fits on less than 30 megabyte media and takes just 80 megabytes of hard disk space. Now that is an interesting one, and I believe that was also suggested to me for uh, for trying it on the um, the laptop that I'm doing up. So yeah, interesting, interesting that one. Um, can't say I'm, I'm particularly familiar with it, and even though I'm sure I've seen that rendering of Tux 
in other places. I don't think I would have got the logo. But uh, but there you go. I would have found this, this quiz rather difficult uh, myself. And the final one, and this really threw me for a loop because this is 171 in the DistroWatch rankings, the Corora project. Based on Fedora, originates from Australia, Corora was born out of a desire to make Linux easier for new users while still being useful for experts. The main goal of Corora is to provide a complete, easy-to-use system for general computing. Originally based on Gen 2 Linux in 2005, Corora was reborn in 2010 as a Fedora remix with tweaks and extras to make the system just work out of the box. I'm not entirely sure if I would have got the logo without the, um, you know, the text in it, um, but I am sure I have spun this one up in a virtual machine before. So. Uh, interesting stuff so that is uh, that is the last of the logos um, let me know how you guys did down in the comment section below let me know if any of these distributions uh, you find particularly interesting I must say each of them has their own uh, you know sort of uh, perspective on things and that's pretty awesome and um, yeah I think uh, uh, a lot of people do often like to say that it's often a problem that there are so many Linux distributions out there because it gives the end user effectively too much choice, especially when you've got so many distributions that are based on Ubuntu that have very similar goals, it seems. But I always like to think that despite that a lot of the Linux-based distributions, especially for desktop usage, are, are rather similar, and, you know, you're choosing between things like package managers, uh, upgrade cycles, all that kind of stuff. And these are the things that you're factoring in. I think the greater value is being able to choose who builds your software. So, and that the end result isn't contingent on that choice. I want a great Linux distribution, but I don't necessarily want this company to be involved in it. Or this company to be involved in it. Or, or this group of people to be involved. You know, you can choose. Like, maybe you trust this group, maybe you don't trust this group. You know, it's uh, it's not a monopoly. Uh, I often find that the problem with Windows... Uh, there's many problems with Windows, but the biggest problem with Windows is the monopoly that it holds, very similar to a lot of the criticisms that I level at Google. Um, and I find that Linux and the Linux ecosystem is the antithesis to this, which I think is absolutely wonderful and... Uh, very important. So that's about it for me today. Let me know if you'd like to see a few more quizzes from time to time. It was quite fun to make. Um, I don't know if I'd, I I wouldn't do another like logo type quiz for distributions, but it will you know I don't know. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.